G'day everybody and welcome to Andy's Motorcycle Obsessions. This is my 1996 Ducati 900 Supersport. It's a beautiful bike and I love it very, very much. Um, I haven't been able to ride it for a little while now um, because of all the work I've been doing on, on my cafe racer. So uh, it's been sitting neglected in the shed and it needs some serious maintenance. Uh, the jobs that we need to do are change the timing belts, we need to recheck the shims on the valves, and I need to replace the valve stem seals, the oil seals on the valve stems, um, because it throws a lot of smoke out when you're on a, on a trailing throttle, which is indicative of, of uh, that kind of, kind of wear. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping that that's all that there is. However, uh, Ducati didn't make it easy for us, they, um, particularly the vertical cylinder, we've got to get the rear shock absorber off and probably the battery box and everything out as well I reckon. Um, they did make it easy in terms of stripping the bike down to get to those components but once you sort it down to the frame then you then you've got a lot of work ahead of you, so we better crack on. So the first job is to remove the fairing. Now, unlike a lot of modern sports bikes, Ducati um, are actually quite easy to get the fairing off. It's only a few, it's only a few bolts, uh, two underneath on the belly, these two here, a couple on the nose, and the whole thing comes off. do the same on the other side. Okay everything that we need to get to is over here so we've got the the timing belts are behind these covers and the shims uh, and the top of the cylinder head you've got rocker covers both sides you've got one on on the intake side and another one on the exhaust side that's housing this oil cooler and on the back we've got one up under here and one in there. So all of this battery box and everything's going to have to come out of the way and the rear shock needs to come out to be able to uh, access this rocker cover. Now if you're not familiar with Ducati, like I said they did make life easy in some ways. That's it, seat off. And this is also is a good feature, you just pull the breather off the tank, release this clip at the front and there's your fuel tank up out of the way. So we can see a little bit clearer now what we need to address here. You know, this battery box has to come out um, to get to this, this rocker cover here and this is the top mount for the shock to get him out of the way to get to that rocker, rocker cover. Now let's remove this battery. battery box is moulded as part of the air cleaner so that whole assembly has got to come out which means I've got to pull the coils out of the way and then disconnect this breather, undo the worm drive clamps on the carburetors, undo these two retaining bolts under here and then lift the assembly off. Jumping ahead a little bit here, I've um, removed the rear shock, and the way I managed to do that was I um, screwed a couple of large blocks of timber together uh, to clear under the exhaust pipe. So I've got one either side of the crank, and uh, I put a car jack in there. I'll give you a quick look. There we go. So that supporting the, the motor, so the swing arm can, uh, and I can just wind it up and down to, to line up the, the shock mounts. So that worked okay. So now we have access to the um, 
to the back. Vertical cylinder exhaust side and vertical cylinder um, inlet side and also the horizontal cylinder uh, top and bottom. I just got to pull the oil cooler out of the way and support it so we don't destroy these um, stainless steel hoses. Then I think I'm going to need to um, manufacture something to rotate the crankshaft because there's a special tool that you've got to get from Ducati but I'm going to see if I can't knock something up. I think this will have an O-ring or something behind it. Right, so what I've done here is I've just got an 8mm bolt and a washer and a nut and I'm hoping that that's going to be enough to be able to rotate the crankshaft. Make life easy. Let's get the plugs out. Now I'm hoping that this will be able to rotate the motor. Yep, we're right. Okay. Well, it looks straightforward enough, but I guarantee it won't be. Well, that wasn't that awkward. Okay, so what we have to do is rotate this bottom pulley. There is a mark on there, uh, on the crankcase right under my finger. You can probably not see it because of that switch there, but there's a mark in the crankcase and there is a mark on the, on the pulley. And up the top, there is a dimple on the um, case cover, on the belt cover, and there is a corresponding mark on both of the front and the rear pulley. So they are all lined up now, but I'm going to mark it all with a paint pen and mark the belts as well, and then put corresponding marks on the new belts. But I want these off so that I can spin the valve, um, put the piston down out of the way and just spin the valve um, we'll fix the timing up later. Right, so all you got to do is put a 6mm in hex socket into the chain tensioner, uh, belt tensioner, and release it. Should have tried the other way. This is really hard to see in here, and I apologise, guys. But there is a ring around that one, so it's probably easy to take it off at the front and then slip him over the back. I'm just going to mark this belt as the horizontal. I need to do the same on the back. There we go. Before we go back to the valves, I thought I'd just give you a quick look. So there's your drive pulley um, and the marks I was talking about. You can see the distinctive mark in the crankcase and then the white dot that I highlighted on the pulley. Uh, this one here, dot to dot. This one here has now moved because I turned it. That's okay. We'll, uh, we'll get him back where he should be in a minute. I can't quite get a three in there, I don't think. This is a tooth owl shim. Tooth owl 
two Thalgos in the bottom. Let's mm, see. No, I'm going to call that four Thal, and I'm fairly sure that that is uh, not too bad. Okay, so they measure fine there. Um, two Thal at the bottom and four Thal on top. So what I've just done now is I've just removed this this spring clip so that I can slide this uh, out of the way. So I guess if you're not familiar with the Desmetronic valve system, once you move that clip, you can just turn the cam and push the push the closing cam, opening cam out of the way and the shim just comes off like so. Now the front one we need to push down on the cam. I'm just going to remove the clip on the back one and slide it out of the way so that we've got a bit of freedom here on the exhaust. Okay so we've got uh, we've got this opening cam out of the way and also on the exhaust so we can now spin the, the camshaft and what we want to do is push this guy down out of the way there we go so I just need to leave the cam so I can push that against the spring and be able to remove these collets but before I do that I've got this pair of uh, needle no, well, needle-nosed locking pliers, small ones, with a little bit of plastic tube on the ends, so that I can grab the valve and stop it falling down into the cylinder. These are the collets. And the shim should just slide off like so. What's talking about? Now I want to try and bring this vertical cylinder to top dead center. So I can actually drop that valve, like so, and then wind it to about there, and try and remove that valve guide seal. Sorry guys, this is really awkward, just trying to hook that out of there. Of course, we've got to get the other one in yet. I'm not just trying to lower that margin anymore. Being very careful. The last thing we want to do is lose the valve into the cylinder. It'll be motor out. Okay. There's our valve guide seal. And here's a new inlet Viton seals. This, these are from Gowan Lock to Caddy in Australia. If you're uh, looking for parts, there you men. See if we can get this on there, eh? All I don't want to do here is damage it. So it's got a clip down over the top of the valve guide. Yes, very tricky. Uh, let's have a think about this. Now, the it was very difficult to try and film inside that little space um, when it came to refitting the valve guide seals. So I've just drawn a quick representation of what I've what I've uh, I ended up doing. This is representing the valve guide. Of course, that would go down into the cylinder head, so it's not accurate. But roughly, this is the profile that you'll see. Uh, sitting above uh, the cylinder head casting. 
the green line represents the valve guide seal because they hook into these this channel that runs around the outside of it and the blue is obviously the valve so what I had to do was wind the wind the um, crankshaft over until the valve was almost flush or flush with the top of the, the valve guide and then I could get in with my fingers and push and, and make it fit on uh, it's really the only way to do it and then once once uh, once the seal was in place, I just wound the motor back the other way and the piston drove the valve back up through the seal and we were all good to go. Uh, very good. Good seal. It's on there now. Just behaved itself all of a sudden. Now I'm just going to wind this motor backwards. See if we can't bring that valve back up. Now I've got to try and clamp it in the highest possible position so that I can squash that closing cam down low enough to get the cotters back, the thing back together again. I think that might be alright there. Whew, that was close. Nearly lost the exhaust valve in there. Okay, with the, with the front cylinder on top dead centre, we need to push down on the closing rocker arm and then measure the gap between the the closing shim and the closing rocker arm. Now on the vertical cylinder it was a two thou gap and I can tell you now it's bigger than that. Well, that's a four thou shim that's way too big a gap. Hmm. That feels pretty good. All right, so that was a six thou gap or 0.15 of a millimeter. And that's a big gap. Uh, now on the vertical cylinder that was four thou. This is well that's a six thou shim and that just flew through. We'll go up to You shouldn't have any resistance, you shouldn't have to push it in there. And that's 8 thou, that's perfect, which is 0 0.20. 0 0.20 of a millimetre. Uh, that's 